happening, and please use the hashtag OffTheChartLive if you want to, you know, basically make everybody who didn't come jealous. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the idea here. So um, just off the charts live, and feel free to tag me as well. We'll probably be retweeting and resharing and stuff, so we really appreciate that. All right, so this weekend we're going to be talking about a lot of different things. We're going to be talking about actual charts and analytics and metrics and things that move your business forward. But we're also going to be talking about stuff that can't be added to a chart, that can't be measured. And that's kind of that internal stuff that you're going to learn about that makes the biggest difference, really, because at the end of the day, we can all be in front of our computers, but that's not what's really going to make that big impact in the world that we all want to make. So we're going to have a mix of both, and I'm sure it's all going to help you a whole lot. All right, so first, I want everybody to just raise your hand, just like, like you just don't care. <laughs> I found myself 
designing websites all over again. And I was like, man, I'm back in square one. I'm like 12 years old again. What's happening? And what ended up happening is that I was just on this spiral staircase. So it wasn't that I was back to square one. It's just that I was back to a similar space, but with a whole different perspective. I had so many years of experience doing all kinds of other technical things, all kinds of interpersonal stuff, relationship stuff. And that was so useful, and it brought so much to that business. And it really helped me to grow that business and make it successful as well. So I really want you to think about, is there something in your life that you might be experiencing right now that you're like, oh, like I'm stuck. Like I keep doing the same thing over and over again. Like what's wrong with me? It, it might not be a bad thing. It might actually be the spiral staircase in action. So just maybe think about it for a quick second. Is there something that you feel like you're repeating in your business? Or maybe there's something that you keep finding yourself in and maybe it's something that you're good at, but maybe not something you want to build a business around. I know sometimes we fall into these businesses or business models. So it's good to just kind of be aware of that. All right, so this is kind of what I envision as this path towards success. And it's a spiral that does go in the right direction, and it's just not as direct necessarily. Um, so this is, you know, you're still going to get from point A to point B, but the good thing is that you're going to have so much perspective and so much experience and mastery and all that good stuff along the way. So have you guys ever watched a movie? Like maybe it's a movie you've seen before and suddenly you're watching it again because it's a rerun or whatever, you're just kind of inspired to watch it again. And then you recognize that an actor and actress that you've seen in a new movie or a new show and you're like, oh, that's that person from that thing. And then suddenly it like clicks, right? So this is what we're actually going to be doing this weekend. So we're going to be talking about a couple of different things that you may have heard before, but because you're in a whole different space, you're in a whole different perspective, it's going to click. So this is really what I want you guys to take away from this weekend is that, you know, come to it from a beginner's mind and come to it expecting to see some stuff you may have seen before, but also that you're going to be able to really take it at a different level because you're already at a different level. You've had so much different experiences. And I know you're all along the spectrum, so some of you are starting out, some of you are more experienced, um, but that's totally cool and it's totally going to help. So the next time you hear this information, you'll be in a different place. Maybe I should do this first, maybe I should do that first. But this whole thing is about helping 
this is step three. Step four is make sales and get feedback. Now, for some of you, you might say, well, I don't have a website yet. I have to do this other thing. So this is why make sales is very early, <laughs> so that you can test that and make sure you have the right pricing and the right offerings before you do all the other stuff. Number five is fine tune your business model. And we're going to be talking in a whole session about business models today. Number six is story and positioning. And this is really important in the marketplace. Number seven is building your business assets. So that's like list building, intellectual property, relationships, kind of all of those important business assets. Um, number eight is evaluate what's working and decide if you should keep doing it or not. <laughs> all right, and number nine is scale by automating, delegating, and streamlining. Okay, and how does this final staircase work? each of these in more detail just so you can really feel what I'm talking about here. But I just wanted to mention, I came up with these nine steps and I was like, hmm, nine steps, nine months, maybe there's some sort of significance here, burning business, you know, slide goals for women, who knows. But I just wanted to add that in there. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and dive into these steps. So the first one is the why. So getting clear and getting confident on why you're doing this. We all have different reasons why we're in business right now, doing what we're doing right now, and trying to help the people that we're helping right now. Um, so I can't tell you the why or that answer, but it's really good for you to know it because it's going to help you communicate better, help you find the right people to help you with your mission, um, and also just make sure that the right people who are your ideal clients will really understand why you're doing what you're doing. Um, and then also, why are you the person who should be doing this work? Because sometimes we're like, oh, you know, everybody else are doing this, or we have these, these kind of doubts that creep up. And when you get clear on why this thing, you, right now, are the perfect person to make this happen, it will make a huge difference in how confident you are and how easy it is for you to actually market yourself and connect with people. Cool. All right, so the next thing is who. So in business, there's a really fine balance between doing what you love and then also doing things that people are willing to pay you for, right? And, you know, there's the whole starting artist thing, which is probably a possibility, but there's also the possibility of doing something you love and also helping people and being a service at the same time. So this is really that intersection point between your gifts and their needs. So you'll have to figure that out for yourself in your business what that means. But once you have that, that's where your, your offerings and your paid programs and your paid services really come into play. So this is all about getting the value equation right. So what are people willing to pay for what it is that you're creating? And what you really want to create is a situation where people feel like they're getting such a steal, like, oh my god, they cannot believe they're getting it at this price. And at the same time that you're able to deliver it in such a way that you're still making a profit. Right? So it has to feel like, wow, like I'm making so much profit, like I want to do this all day. So this is the exact same formula that you want to use when you're pricing anything in your business. Make sure that it feels really good for them, that they're getting all the value, um, all the benefits that they're really looking for, and then also that you're feeling like, oh, yes, I just want to sell this all the time because it's, it's awesome. Great. So the reason I put this uh, at this step is because you really want people to um, actually put cash down. So if they're not willing to pay you for it, then it's not a viable product or program or offering. Did my audio just disappear? Yes. <laughs> um, you can still hear? Okay, hop. Huh? Okay. Great. <laughs> All right, well, it seems like it's back enough, right? Okay, good. So, okay, so that's, that's really where it, it's all about. So I want really to emphasize that you want to be making sales early so that you know if it's a viable product or program or business, so that you're not waiting and just saying, oh, everybody says they love my idea, but when you actually ask them to pay for it, they're like, oh, I'm too busy, or I can't afford it, or you know, whatever, you don't want that to happen. So this is why this is so early on in this step. All right, so now we have, oh, did I already say that? Okay, we're making sales, sorry. So this is the next step, but it, totally follows from having the offers that have the right price. So yeah, so this is really all about bringing in the money for your offerings and making sure that people are 
aren't willing to give you that money for it. And you know, a lot of times we're like, oh, I need to do a huge launch, or we're going to talk about launches tomorrow. Um, but really, sometimes it's all about that one on one that you can have with somebody. And if they're like, yes, I believe in you, I believe in your product, I believe in the value that you're offering, they're going to say yes. And you don't need the fancy website and the like crazy videos and shopping cards <laughs> and all these things. You can really get started started um, kind of that bootstrapping way, which is really, really helpful for your business as it's growing. All right, so now this is where you design your business call. So you've made a couple sales, you're like, okay, I'm, I'm on track, things are moving forward. Now it's time to think about that big picture and how everything really fits together. So your business model, is it scalable? Is it something that you're feeling really comfortable and good about? Is it something that serves the number of people that you're out to serve in the world? Those are all some key questions that you want to be asking about your business model. And we're going to have a whole session about this as well, so don't feel like, I don't know how to answer that. It's totally cool. It's just to know which order to be doing things in. All right. Oops. All right. So now we want to um, write your story and position yourself. So this is really huge, especially if you're in a crowded marketplace or if people don't really understand what it is that you do, it's important to be able to communicate why you're doing what you're doing, why you're that person who should be doing it, and also your story. So what brought you to where you are today? Because as human beings, we want to do business with other human beings, not with these kind of faceless corporations, right? So I think that's a really important piece is being able to write your story and also to be able to position yourself in the marketplace and to say, you know, this is me, that is not me. And this is me and I am not this. And we're definitely going to talk more and there's some speakers we're going to do stuff about this a little bit later um, this weekend. So the next thing is to build business assets. So I see so many people jump to this point, and this is why I have it kind of laid on in this cycle. And you know, I have the 30 day list building challenge, so of course everyone's like, oh great, like let's build my list. But if you don't have the other steps first, it's really hard to build a list with the right people. So this is where you start building your list, your website, um, your intellectual property, your courses. Relationships. I mean, obviously relationships should be a lifelong thing, but if it is something that you want to be doing more of strategically in your business, this is a great place to be doing it. And so building your business assets, these are things in your business that nobody can take away. They could also be skills, they could be your customer list, they could be um, your website or like some proprietary thing that you've created. And these are things that you'll want to have kind of long term in your business. Great. Okay, so now we have evaluate what's working. So as things are starting to hum along, you know, you've got some assets kind of building up and you've got people coming in and sales happening. Now it's time to really take stock and to also measure if what you're doing is working or not. So most of the time as business owners, we know it's working because our bank account tells us it's working or it's not working, right? And that's the easiest way to know. But also, you know, check in with other metrics and other things in your business. Are you tired and burned out? That's a really obvious one. Um, are you feeling like you don't have enough time? That's another one. And sometimes those are things that need to be tweaked, but sometimes there's other things that you might not notice. Like maybe you'll see that um, you're getting all of your referrals from a very small source or a very small place and it's not repeatable, and you can't get more of those referrals. So it's really important to you know, figure out what's working, what could be improved, and also what to stop doing. Because sometimes you'll see, oh, I'm doing all this work, I'm doing all this work, but it's actually not generating anything. <laughs> so, a lot of times we end up in this busy work. All right, so number nine is scale, streamline, automate, and delegate. So this is the one that sometimes we jump to a little too early as well, because we're like, okay, great. Um, I think I have a business. I'm supposed to hire people, right? <laughs> That's the whole point of having a business. But you have to be in a certain place to actually have stuff to delegate and have stuff to automate. So once you've actually tested some of the things that you're doing in your business, then it makes sense to start streamlining and creating systems to automate them um, and to also just make it easier to hire it out and have other people help with that as well. So those are the nine steps and you can just go through them over and over again. Was that helpful? Cool. Awesome. Great. So um, I think I'm actually just going to check how we're doing on time here. Perfect. Okay, great. So we are going to um, have a little break and um, just like to get everybody settled in. And we're going to come back after the break and we're going to have um, Teresa, oh there she is, Teresa Steven is going to show us a little dance moves. And uh, from, from there we're going to go back into some brain more presentations. And um, is there anything else I have to say?
House rules. House rules. Okay, Robin, yes. Robin, we got any house rules. <laughs> Isn't he here? All right. So I'll do, I'll do this. So basically, um, bathrooms, if you haven't seen yet, there's a code. It's 6013. They're on um, the right hand side of the side there. Um, and then we also have um, some snacks available. So you guys are totally welcome to help yourself to some snacks. We've got some great sponsors that we're super, super grateful to have on board. And they've donated all kinds of great goodies. And yeah, you'll see, it's just amazing. <laughs> um, so we're very, very grateful to them. And yes, OK, so we have this really cool activity. So we're going to be giving out different prizes throughout the weekend. And one of the prizes um, will be related to meeting other people. So how many of you would say that you're an introvert? Yeah, OK, so yeah. So one of the reasons I do this event every year is to get all the introverts together in the same room. So <laughs>